An estimated 40 million Americans suffer from some form of chronic sleep disorder. That estimated cost to the U.S. economy and lost productivity, $18 billion. A week from today, all of our sleep patterns will get a jolt as we roll our clocks back an hour for daylight saving time. Joining us here with some advice is Dr. Renji Verghese, who is the medical director of the Minnesota Regional Sleep Disorder Center at Hennepin County Medical Center. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for inviting right. me. That, that figure is so astounding, 40 million. How, do, how does somebody know if they have an actual disorder as opposed to maybe not getting enough sleep? Yeah, so great question. I mean, when we're asleep, we're all, we have a, an alteration in our conscious, so we're really not aware. When we talk about sleep apnea, most of the time the bed partners are aware that their patients may, or their, their partner might not be breathing. For things like insomnia, you know when you're not sleeping. I mean, that's the definition of insomnia, not being able to get to sleep or stay asleep. But the consequences of sleep disorders can be not being able to think clearly feeling sleepy during the daytime, maybe a little bit more irritability. So there are these telltale signs. How about somebody who is just a big snorer? Yeah, that's a great question. Snoring is just a symptom of a larger problem. It could just be snoring alone, or it could be a symptom of underlying sleep apnea, where sleep apnea is the clo a closure of the upper airway. So snoring, if it's loud enough, if there are witnessed apneas, or we call choking episodes, that's definitely a, an underlying All problem. Right. Can everybody get help? If they come to a sleep disorder center like the one at Hennepin County Medical Center, can you treat everybody? Can you fix everybody's problem? The majority of people will get help. And um, I think we do a really good job in trying to identify how complex a patient is. But I, the answer is yes. I mean, the majority of people will get help. All right. I, you know, I work in a field where a lot of people, as the medical field as well, where you have a lot of people with very unusual schedules. And I know that there are people who rely on Ambien and, and other medications to help them deal with an irregular schedule. What, are you, what is your advice about Ambien as a medication and other sleep aids? I think that medications have their role for the types of sleep disorders. Um, as you had mentioned, you know, alterating shifts and late night shifts or rotating shifts, uh, we, we call these circadian rhythm disruptions. And in fact, as we push to this daylight savings end, our circadian rhythms will start getting bounced around for the next few weeks or so. And in those and cases... And does it really have an impact that one hour? Yeah, well, for some people, in, in the springtime as we pull forward, um, we're losing an hour of sleep. Right. So technically, if you're already sleep deprived leading up to that, you know, forward, um, you're going to lose an hour of sleep and you may have some cognitive dysfunction, just not thinking as sharp as you normally do. Okay. If somebody is concerned about themselves or a loved one, should they go to their own doctor first? Should they come to you? Yeah, that's a great question. I think the point of contact should always be the uh, primary provider. Uh, they may be able to, you know, treat their patient or help their patient before they send them okay. off to myself as a specialist. Uh, just out of curiosity, how many patients does HCMC have in the sleep disorder center, you know, and, and the age range? Well, we see um, patients as young as three years old to as old as, we've, I, we've got a 99-year-old uh, woman. Really? So, absolutely, yeah. Okay, well, yeah. I know a lot of parents who've got kids with, with, with sleep problems, so maybe they could get some help as well. Well, Absolutely. listen, uh, doctor, we have a link to your website um, at HCMC on our website, so anybody has any questions or wants to get some advice, they can go there. So thank you so much for thank coming you in. Thank you for having me.